Hi, my name is Chen, and this is um, the first part for um, my calligraphy for beginners. Calligraphy for super beginners, because I'm going to talk about stuff that um, that daunted me when I was starting out. So I hope this um, series of um, uh, tutorials would cover a lot of, you know, things that people might think are silly questions or super beginner questions or or um, things that um, uh, I'll try and explain everything I'm not a, I'm not an expert <laughs> but uh, this is based on my experience and I hope that it will help you if you are uh, looking to get into this art so um, uh, this is for a pointed pen and uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of nibs here. So nibs here is also known as pens or a pointed pen because they are, you know, they are pointed. And this tool here is called an oblique holder, uh, oblique pen holder or offset holder. It's because they have this thing that makes it kind of stick out. It looks kind of funny. And this thing is called a flange. So the point is you buy um, I'm gonna need a pliers. So the thing is you buy these holders separately like that and these flanges have little slots in them. You see? And what you do is you buy the nibs separately, like that, usually in packs of 5 or 10. So you get these and you just stick it into your, your pen holder, like that. Just stick it right in and if you need, you get a pliers and, and there you go. So this is the tool that calligraphers use for um, copper plate or stencilian. Um, as you can see, there's all kinds of nibs, different shapes, different sizes. So each of them write differently as well. It's kind of like uh, pens these days. You have like uh, microns and ballpoints and fountain pens and gel pens and felt pens, uh, whatever, and they all write differently. So in the same way, these are made by different manufacturers, made of different materials and different points, and they all write differently, more or less differently. So it's quite an adventure to uh, try out nibs that you haven't heard before, or nibs that you haven't tried before, and trying to uh, um, see what their characteristics are and it might get a little addictive because like me you know I, I like trying all kinds of nibs so I just accumulate like hundreds of them a good nib to start with and I'm not gonna say this is the only nib you should use are these Japanese manga nibs they are chrome plated so it's really shiny and it doesn't rust very easily and um, they are kind of cheap about two dollars two fifty each and they are very beginner friendly and very good nibs a lot of nibs are too sharp or too brittle or don't flex well or too flexy or whatever and they might not be appropriate but these Japanese nibs are just great they are called the Nikko G or the Zebra G and they are both kind of different but uh, you might like it, you, you should try it. So what I mean about flexing is the amount of pressure that one needs to create a shade um, with the nib. So I'm going to dip it in ink now and I'm going to write now with no pressure, so 
this is no pressure at all I'm just dragging it across the paper with no pressure so you see it's all one standard line and we call these hair lines because they are as fine as a hair now see what happens when I apply a bit of pressure the line starts to change that's because the um, it's because the uh, oops the nib tines which is the legs start to spread you see and once it spreads the ink will go inside the tines to create a swell or shade like that so again if I press it will create a shade okay now I'm going to talk about why we should get an oblique holder um, the reason is because when we write uh, copper plate on Spencerian the letters are at an angle remember in cursive you know it's at an angle so uh, while it is possible to write using a straight holder so this is a straight holder and I'm just gonna stick uh, stick this guy into it so yeah you can use a straight holder but the thing is you know you gotta kind of like hold it in a weird way and your ang and your your wrist is kind of like bent to get the angle but with an oblique holder you're kind of like holding it normally because the the flange is holding it at an angle for you so I'm just gonna write the word um, apple so you can see what I mean so dip and you see it automatically holds it at an, at an angle for me but keep in mind the paper is at an angle okay so uh, do what you gotta do to get the angle right so um, A P P yeah, kind of something like that. But you get the idea. It's at an angle, and it's usually uh, somewhere between forty-five to fifty-five degrees. And it's so much easier because this guy does all the work for me. Now, if I was going to do the same thing with a straight holder. it would be a pain in the butt because I would have to hold my arm like that and oh boy um, I gotta kinda like bend my wrist this way or hold the paper in a really angled way this was a failed A oh so not used to it I mean you can do it but I just think it's kind of uh, difficult so yeah if you if you want to use a straight holder be my guess but for this whole tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating with an oblique holder it's what I'm used to and I think it it kind of like um, reduces a lot of headaches that you would run into if you are using a straight holder but whatever floats your boat right okay <laughs>